gosh. Please forgive me. I have no prepared statement for you today, but I am being very present tense and listening to what everyone has said. And what is shocking to me, a few things, uh, Kapepe's words are as relevant today, perhaps even more so than they were in the 70s. I mean, than they were in the past, right? We're back to the future. Is that where we're headed? Uh, two, um, what Bishop Ambo is going through is happening to everyone who has raised a voice, everyone who is perceived to be an enemy, everyone who questions, who demands accountability. And I think what we need to do now is for each of us to look at ourselves, look at our area of influence, and, um, and realize that silence is consent. I'm not the first person to say that. Silence is complicity. I forgot the main thing first. Thank you the fam to the family of Kapepe. Thank you to the Jokno family, to La Salle. Um, again, please forgive me. I'm so tired of hearing myself. Uh, I'm so tired of talking about things that should be so clearly, uh, that should be just transparent and clear to all of us. Everyone who has values, every Filipino who believes in the rule of law. What we're seeing is death by a thousand cuts of our democracy. And it is done, um, then think about the bleeding, right? Little cuts, little cuts to the body politic, to the body of Philippine democracy. And when you have enough of these cuts, you are so weakened that you will die. And one of the things that I cannot understand in the year, in 2018, folks, um, Rappler has faced at least 10 cases that are ongoing now. Um, I have had in the past two months to post bail six times. Uh, I now have to ask permission to travel, which is a constitutional right of every Filipino. I'll just point out the two things that are happening. Uh, the first is that this violence that is part of our lives today is not normal. It is what engenders fear. And fear is there to silence us. So it goes back to that beginning. The NBI officer who arrested me on, uh, on February 13th, actually I think he was the main, he was the leader of the group, he came into the office and our reporter, Ike Ray, was just sh taking B-roll, was shooting, live streaming uh, on Facebook. And he told her, be silent or you're next. My arrest doesn't hurt me because it only makes me more resolute because I see firsthand how the law is bent to the point that it is broken. But that arrest is meant to be an example to you. Uh, it's meant to send the signal, be silent or you're next. Uh, and I think it is up to us, up to you, to take your power now. Because over time, that power will diminish. That power will be harder to exercise. That is a fundamental human right. Freedom of the press is not just about journalists. Uh, freedom of the press is fundamental to every Filipino's right to information. Information to hold the powerful to account. That's what it's there for. That's what a healthy, robust democracy is like. And, you know, as former President Aquino, as President Aquino knows, um, he doesn't have that much love lost for Rappler during the time he was president. We were also critical. Rappler is a critical news group because it is our job to hold the powerful to account. We're there for the people, and our power in the press is only a reflection of the power of the people. So the two things that I promised you I would tell you is about how social media has been weaponized. Thank you for that. Yes. Uh, again, 
President Aquino had said before that, you know, what it, why is it that when I post something, there are immediate comments? Because it's weaponized. I didn't know it then. I realized it after we got the data in July of 2016. So what happens, it's called patriotic trolling. They use the language, co-opt the language of nationalism to attack and this is online, to attack the target a million times until that target is pounded into silence. Don't be pounded into silence. We refuse to be silenced. That's the first. Then they target institutions of journalism. That was one of the first targets. Opposition politicians, second. Individual journalists, third. Um, and actually one of the first ones were the normal people on Facebook who questioned the extrajudicial killings. So we need to not be silent. The second, we know this, the weaponization of the law. So you're at the ground floor, our information ecosystem is polluted with toxic sludge. It is coming up bottom up. You think that uh, while well, you're being attacked and that has a psychological impact on you, but you think that there is mass support for something so completely wrong, like killing people without due process. While some real Filipinos believe that, they are the targets of the information warfare that's been launched. Then you come top down with the weaponization of the law. And no one knows this better than Chel Jotna and the lawyers of flag. Once the law is weaponized, once selective justice is rolled out, once rule of law is dead, then we don't have democracy. I don't want to be negative because even as we see this, here's the solution. What the heck is our hashtag for today? What is our hashtag? Do we have a hashtag? Let's find the hashtags in your area of influence in your social media, because it starts there. That's where you know the, the fear of the violence in the real world that, that focuses on you. On social media, it starts with the attack. So every person in this room, look at your account. Open it. They, please remember that they, Davao Death Squad became Duterte diehard supporters, that the color yellow was demonized. Look at the power of social media and go full force. My appeal to the politicians, move towards the spirit of the Constitution. My appeal to the men and women in the judiciary. Now I'm going to sound like Cap Pepe did. Look at your conscience. And before I, I go over my time, this is a battle we must win. It is a battle for the future. It is the, a battle for right now. And we at Rappler, I've said this. It's been a year now since I've said this. We will not duck. We will not hide. We will hold the line. Join us.